Look, I don't care how high the stock market thinks it can go. There should no longer be any doubt that the economy is slowing down. But most Americans still don't realize what's happening because the major news networks are completely focused on the endless impeachment drama that's currently playing out in Washington. Obviously that's important because it threatens to rip the nation to pieces. But meanwhile, economic activity has taken a very ominous turn. Hiring is slowing, consumer confidence is plunging, defaults on auto loans are rapidly escalating, the transportation recession continues to get deeper, and it appears that the housing bubble's popping. Everywhere we turn, there are signs of economic trouble. Mean as we head into a pivotal election year in 2020, not since the last recession have we seen numbers this bad. The mini boom that we witnessed for several years has now turned into a bust, and very tough times are ahead. I'm not going to play with words here, I'm just going to give it you straight out. 14 signs that the US economy is steadily weakening. Number one. U.S. business hiring has fallen to a seven-year low. Number two, consumer confidence in the United States has now declined for three months in a row. Number three, defaults on subprime auto loans are happening at the fastest pace since 2008. Four, the percentage of subprime auto loans, at least 60 days delinquent, is now higher than at any point during the last recession. 5. Vacancies at US shopping malls have hit the highest level since the last recession. 6. Destination Maternity has announced that they will be closing 183 stores as the worst year for store closings in U.S. history continues to get worse. 7. The Cass Freight Index has now fallen for 10 months in a row. 8. U.S. rail car load volumes have plunged to the lowest level in three years. 9. In September, 10. Tesla's U.S. sales were down a massive 39% during the third quarter of 2019. 11. The bad news just keeps rolling in for the real estate industry. Last month, existing home sales in the United States declined by another 2.2%. 12. New home prices have fallen to the lowest level in almost three years. 13. According to one recent report, 44% of all Americans don't make enough money to cover their monthly expenses. 14. A recent survey found that more than two-thirds of all U.S. households, quote-unquote, are preparing for households, quote unquote, are preparing for a possible recession. All over the country, economic activity is slowing down and this is hitting many small businesses particularly hard. In Wisconsin, one aluminum firm has seen bookings plunge by 40% and was forced to lay off workers as a result. Sakin Shivaram Chief Executive of Wisconsin Aluminum Foundry started to worry this summer when orders for his brake housings and conveyor belt motors first grew scarce. Within weeks, what began as mild concern snowballed into a business drought that has seen bookings plunge by 40%. In August, Shivaram reluctantly laid off two dozen workers, hoping to recall them when the outlook improved. It hasn't. Quote unquote, things are not, it hasn't, quote unquote, things are not good, 
we didn't anticipate this level of deterioration. Orders are down across the board. Of course, there are hundreds of other examples just like this one. As times get tougher, many US consumers are increasingly turning to debt to help make ends meet. For those at the low end of the economic food chain, getting approved for credit cards and other conventional forms of debt can be quite difficult. This has opened up a door for online financial predators and they're making a killing by making loans to people that can't afford them. In fact, it's being reported that online lending has become a $50 billion industry and sometimes these so-called loans carry annual interest rates of more than 100%. It's called the online 100%. It's called the online installment loan, a form of debt with much longer maturities, but often the same sort of crippling triple-digit interest rates. If the payday loan's target audience is the nation's poor, the installment loan is geared to all those working-class Americans who have seen their wages stagnate and unpaid bills pile up in the years since the Great Recession. In just the span of five years online, installment loans have gone from being a relatively niche offering to a red-hot industry. Non-prime borrowers now collectively owe about $50 billion on installment products, according to credit reporting firm TransUnio, without attracting the kind of public and regulatory backlash that hounded the payday loan. In exactly the same way the payday loan industry flourished during the last recession, now predatory lending is flourishing during this present era. Unfortunately, as the everything bubble bursts, times are going to be very tough for all of us during the years ahead. I think Michael Pento of Pento Portfolio Strategies summed things up very well when he made the following statement during a recent interview, quote, When this thing implodes, we're all screwed. On a global scale, we have never before created such a magnificent bubble. These central bankers are clueless, and they've pe- proven that be- these central bankers are clueless, and they've pe- proven that beyond a doubt. All they could do is to try to keep the bubble going. End of quote. It's the central bankers who take the credit for keeping the bubble going for as long as it has. It should never have lasted this long, but thanks to unprecedented intervention, they've been able to keep it alive. But no financial bubble lasts forever. And now things have started to shift in a major way. Never mind 2020. The time of the perfect storm is now upon us. Get yourselves and your money out of Dodge while you still can. This will be one for the US will be more powerful and more respected than ever before and that we will see unprecedented prosperity in the nation. But despite extremely wild spending by the US government and exceedingly irresponsible intervention by the Federal Reserve, the US economy hasn't even had a good year in ages. As I've pointed out numerous times, we haven't had a year when U.S. GDP grew by at least 3% since the middle of the Bush administration, and that makes this the longest stretch of low growth in all of U.S. history by a very wide margin. Many believe that brighter days may still be ahead, but all the economic numbers we've been getting in recent months make it abundantly clear that a new economic slow growth in all of U.S. history by a very wide margin. Many believe that brighter days may still be ahead, 
but all the economic numbers we've been getting in recent months make it abundantly clear that a new economic slowdown has begun. It seems I need to bring people even more evidence of just how bad things are and why they can only get much worse. Let's start by having a look at how US consumers are faring. US consumer confidence has now fallen for three months in a row and this week we learned that the Bloomberg Consumer Comfort Index has just fallen at the fastest pace in more than eight years on a pullback in Americans' assessments of the economy, personal finances and the buying climate, possibly signalling more moderate household spending. Consumer Comfort Index fell 2.4 points the most since March 2011, to 61 in the week ended October the 27th? How in the world can anyone possibly claim that we have a booming economy after hearing that? We also just got another depressingly bad manufacturing number. <clears throat> Experts were expecting a reading of 48.3 for the Chicago Purchasing Management Index, but instead it sank to just 43.2 in October from 47.1 in the prior month. This is the lowest level since December 2015. Economists had been expecting a reading of 48.3, according to Econoday. Any reading below 50 indicates... Remember how we were promised a manufacturing renaissance? Well, instead, ladies and gentlemen, I don't even know if it's not just cruel to bring this information to you. Manufacturing is now the smallest share of the U.S. economy that it's been in 72 years. This is the antithesis of what America is all about. That takes us right back to the Second World War. It's like the country has to start all over again. That would be bad enough, but the consumer hasn't hardly even begun to suffer as yet. I don't think we will ever bottom out from this ghastly story. Manufacturing traditionally provides good paying jobs and, as I pointed out, US business hiring has now level in seven years. Oh yes, Government jobs are doing fine, aren't they? Isn't that what kept the Soviet Union afloat for 72 years? Government employment? So is this really a socialist state? Is that really why the Democrats are screaming? Their precious entitlements are being taken away for which there is no money to pay? Because in the private sector, things are getting really tough. And we're starting to see lots of big companies lay off workers. For example, Molson Coors just announced that they'll be laying off up to 500 workers as they desperately search for a way to survive in this difficult economic environment. To drive efficiency and enable growth further, Molson Coors is consolidating and reorganizing economic environment. To drive efficiency and enable growth further, Molson Coors is consolidating and reorganizing office locations. Quote, the Denver office will be closed and Chicago will be designated as the North American operational headquarters. Functional support roles currently housed in several offices around the country will now be based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, as a result, we expect to reduce employment levels by approximately 400 to 500 employees as part of this restructuring, primarily in our existing United States, Canada and international reporting segments, as well as corporate. End of quote. You know that things are getting tough when even beer companies start laying people off. Of course, the retail apocalypse. More than 100 Forever 21 stores are slated to close as part of the fashion retailer's Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection case, 
according to court documents filed this week. The family-owned company, which has about 32,800 employees, said it would close most of its stores in Asia and Europe, and up to 178 stores in the US when it filed for protection on September the 29th. A similar scenario is playing out for Dress Barn. According to USA Today, all of their 544 stores will close no later than December the 26th. Liquidation sales at the remaining Dress Barn stores will start on Friday, the struggling retailer announced on Wednesday. Retailer announced on Wednesday. While the 544 stores will close no later than December the 26th, the women's clothing website is expected to relaunch in 2020 with a new owner, the company said in a news release. It has been hoped that a limited trade agreement with China might bolster the economy, at least temporarily, but now we're learning that Chinese officials expect phase one of the deal to fall apart soon. According to CNN, the Chinese are pessimistic that China and the US will ever be able to reach a full trade deal. Chinese officials have expressed doubts about whether the world's two largest economies can reach a full trade deal, Bloomberg reported. That is casting a long shadow over the phase one consistent with my warnings from previous articles. The Chinese wanted the Trump administration to stop the implementation of any more tariffs and they were able to achieve that with phase one. But in order to move forward with Phase 2, the Chinese are going to insist on the removal of all tariffs. According to BBG's sources, this is the bare minimum that Beijing would accept to move ahead with Phase 1, a commitment from the Americans to remove tariffs in Phase 2 and agreeing to cancel the next round of tariffs set to take effect in December. This is something that the Trump administration will never agree to, so that puts us back where we originally started. The Chinese will continue to negotiate, but only for purposes. There's only about a year left until the 2020 elections, and the Chinese are hoping to run out the clock on the Trump administration with as little disruption to their own economy as possible. Unfortunately for the Chinese, Trump could possibly win another term, and if either Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders win, they could potentially be even tougher on trade with China. In any event, we should not expect a comprehensive trade deal with China any time soon, And that's really bad news for the economic optimists. Of course, the truth is that everything I've just told you is bad for all of us. The US economy is seriously deteriorating and things are only going to get worse in the years ahead. All of us. The US economy is seriously deteriorating and things are only going to get worse.